What's up, everybody? It's Salas Kingdom there, Kingdom Fourth here, guys. I hope you're having a great, <clears throat> hope you're having a great day, great evening. Um, man, God is great, guys. Keep God first, and you'll never take a loss. Okay, you're, you're not going to take any loss. I don't care if it looks like you're losing. I don't care what it looks like. You're not going to take. You're not taking any losses. Keep God first. You will not take a loss. So, guys, let me make sure. So, guys, I hope you're having a great day. Um, we talked about Daniel. We talked about Daniel chapter 2 yesterday and how God um, how God promoted Daniel and his friends, right? We talked about being, how God promoted them, not people. Uh, now, today, I'm going to show you. I want to read. God wants me to read um, Daniel chapter 3 um, on how he protected, how God protected um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm going to read the whole story, okay? The same God that protected them is the same one that's going to protect you, guys. That's protecting you right now, okay? So God is a protector. He's a promoter. He's a provider. He's a protector, okay? He's a positioner. He's going to position you where you need to be. You're never going to take a loss if, if you put God first. You cannot take a loss. No matter what kind of circumstance it looks like, you're never trapped, Okay, you can never be trapped if you put God first. We saw it with Paul and Silas. They were in prison. They looked like they were trapped, but they put God first. They put God first. They prayed and sang to God at midnight. All, all that were around them, them and everyone around them, heard them singing and praising God. And every chain was broken. Every door was open. All the prisoners were set free because. Two people decided to put God first. Joseph. It looked like Joseph was trapped. His brothers threw him into the pit. They sold him into slavery. He looked like he was trapped. It looked like it was over for Joseph. But with God, when you put God first, you can never lose. No matter what it looks like. If you keep him first, whatever it looks like. If it looks like you're trapped, eventually you're going to be free. So Joseph looked like he was trapped. Job looked like he was trapped. He lost everything. But what did God intend for Job? He always intended double for him. When you put God first, you can never be trapped. You can never be, you, can, you can't take any losses. I don't care what it looks like. You will not lose. Okay, Jesus. They thought Jesus lost when he died. Your loss is your actual win. Your loss is your actual win because you can't lose when you put God first. So guys, I want to talk about, yeah, Jesus looked like he lost until he rose back up again. And now he's seated on the right hand, right? He's seated on the throne, right? Right next to God. It looked like he lost. Okay? Circumstances in your life, it may look like you lost. But you haven't lost. You get, you're up. You're giddy up. So I want to talk about Daniel chapter 3. And I want to talk about how God is a protector. Okay? There's nothing too hard for God. So I just want this song to play for a little bit. Then I'm going to talk about, I want to read Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to read the whole thing. But just thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's awesome. He's mighty. Think about what he's doing in your life. He's refreshing you. He's restoring you. He's healing you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can't take a loss when you put God first. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not one thing will be lost. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read Daniel chapter 3, um, the whole thing. Okay, God is protecting you guys, no matter what you're going through. It says the king's golden image, Daniel chapter 3. I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made a gold-plated image whose height included um, the pedestal was 60 cubits, 90 feet, and it's width six cubits, nine feet. I'm showing you how when you put God first, you're going to be promoted. I showed you that yesterday. But when you put God first, you're always protected. You can't lose. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to assemble the uh, satraps, the perfects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the uh, magistrates and lawyers and all the chief of officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then the satraps, the perfects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the, mag the magistrates and lawyers and all the chief officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and speakers of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, uh, trigon, four-stringed harp, a dual, dual chimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. So they want God's children... Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not about to worship this. So they're telling everybody that's there to bow down to this golden image. And they said, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. See, you can't have fear of not doing something that people in the natural world tell you to do um, because of consequences. If it doesn't line up with God and his word and honoring God, I'm not doing it. I don't care what the consequences may be in the physical. If God said don't do it, don't do it. All right. So it says, he said, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. So when the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyric, trigon, uh, doe chimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the people's nations and speakers of every language fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So everybody's bound down to these false gods. They're bowing down to these false gods. Worship of the image refused though. Uh, Shireh, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to these false gods. So at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought malicious accusations against the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, doe chimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. So guys, as you begin to obey God, you're going to have some accusers. You're going to have some people trying to accuse you, okay, of doing the right thing. That's right for God's sight. They're going to try to make you look bad. That's what they tried to do with Shireh, Meshach, and Abednego. And then, and then it says, Whoever does not fall down in worship shall be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men were brought before the king. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, he gave them another chance. When you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyric, trigon, harp, doe timer, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? So here's Nebuchadnezzar telling Shirek, Meshach, and Abednego that their God is not stronger than his false God. He's telling them, if you don't bow down, I'm throwing you into this fiery furnace. I'm, 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 I'm about to do something to you. Maybe you at your job, they're telling you to stop praising God. Stop talking about Jesus. And your boss is saying, if you don't stop talking about Jesus, I'm going to cut, cut your salary in half. Or I'm going I'm I'm to fire you. Right? What are you going to do? Are you going you gonna to bow to them? Or are you going to bow to God? The one that provides for you. The one that is your provider. And that's what Shirek, Meshach, and Abednego did. They did not bow down to the king. They didn't bow down to the king. They didn't bow down to the, the king or his command. They only bowed down to the true and living God. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to not compromise as we go up. As we go to the top. Don't compromise to these false gods. Don't bow down to no other God but Jesus Christ. Alright, but the Lord, but God. Right? And then he said, he said, throw thrown at once into the fierce blazing fire. And what God is there, he he talking about God. He said, What God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? So Sharek, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God, whom we serve. My God, who I am serve, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace and blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, even not our will, but his will be done. Even if he does not rescue us, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So Daniel's friends are protected. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and his facial expressions changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. It don't matter what your enemies try to do to you. It don't matter how hot they try to put fire on you. It don't matter how many tactics they come up with on trying to hurt you, on trying to kill you, on trying to destroy you, your business, your ministry, your life. No matter what weapons they try to form, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You should throw it down. Okay? And so it says, Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. He commanded cer certain strong men in his army to tie up Sharak, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these three men were tied up in their tr uh, trousers, their coats, right? He made sure they couldn't get out. Their turbans and their other clothes and were thrown into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot the flame of the fire killed the men who carried up Sharak, Meshach and Abednego but these three men Sharak, Meshach and Abednego fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire still tied up so here they are in this fire tied up they wanted to kill them then Nebuchadnezzar the king looked and was astonished was astounded and he jumped up and said to his counselors, Did we not throw three men who were tied up into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly! O king! He answered, Look! I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire. So here's, here's Nebuchadnezzar, here's Sherak, Meshach, and Abednego walking in what the enemy, their enemy, has thrown them in. Walking in it. Walking on it. 
Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you all power. Oh, I have given you all power over the enemy to walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. And nothing shall hurt you by any means. Here they are walking through what the enemy meant for evil. God turned it to good. They're walking through the fire. They're walking through what the trap the enemy put them in. But remember, there's nothing hidden from God. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing, there's no way you can be trapped if you put God first. There's no way you can't get out of any circumstance if you put God first. So here's Nebuchadnezzar, um, here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar's answer said, look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire. They walking in the fire. Not running, not, not like, ah, this hot. They walking in the fire. Are you ready to walk in fire? Walk through the fire. <clears throat> and they are not hurt, and you're not going to be hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing furnace and said, Sharat, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, See how Nebuchadnezzar position changed? People, are, people, the way they treat you are about to change. They were mocking your God. They about to start respecting him. Nebuchadnezzar was mocking God. He said, you think your God going to save you in this fire? Good luck, right? And then all of a sudden, now that he sees this miracle, he's like, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's like, he's telling them to come out. Right? He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Servants of the Most High God, come out of there. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The satraps, the, per the perfects, the governors, and the kings, counselors gathered around them and saw that in regard to these men, the fire had no effect on their bodies. Their hair was not, seen was not singed. All right? Nothing was burned. Their clothes were not scorched or damaged. Even the smell of smoke was not on them. So these guys were in the fire, but they didn't smell like the fire. You might be in a fire. You might be in a tough situation right now, but you're not going to smell like it. You're not going to even look like it. You're going to be smiling. You're going to be rejoicing because God delivered you. He helped you when you were in, t in need. Okay, it says, and it says they didn't even smell, they didn't even smell of smoke was not even on them. They didn't smell like it at all. So Nebuchadnezzar re responded and said, Blessed. Do you see how God gets the glory when you keep him first? Never bow down to another God. I don't care if it's for money. I don't care if it's for a position. I don't care what it is. You never bow down to get there. Never compromise to get to the top. You are already at the top. You see Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they were already at the top. They already was at the top. The people just recognized that they were already there because they put God first. When you put God first, you can never take a loss. You can never be a loss. So Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Sharak, Meshach, and Abednego, who has, spent, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants who believed in him, trusted in him, and, replied, and relied on him. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree. See how the decree changed? You see how things change? The only way this culture is going to change is if we get enough people not bowing down to the false gods. Stop bowing down. God is looking for people that he's going to rise up that won't bow down to false gods. Okay, this is what happened. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down to the false god. They didn't bow down to the statue. And then guess what? All of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar, his whole decree changed from worship this false god to worship the true and living God. And that's why God is positioning us and he's prospering us in our ministry and our business. Right? This is, the, this is why our businesses are growing. This is why our ministries are growing to turn the false gods, to turn them upside down, to, to crush them. So people will worship the only true and living God. But you can't compromise, man. As you start to succeed, you can't compromise. You got to let people know God did this. I don't care what you're going through. 
You got to stop looking at your circumstances like that's who you are. You not your circumstances, man. You not your job. You not your house. You not your car. You not what other people think you are. You are what God calls you. You are blessed. You are protected. You are prosperous. You are healthy. You are successful. You are not what other people say you are. You are what God says you are. Stop bowing. The only reason people bow and compromise is because they forget who they are. You are a king. You seated in high places. I'm a king. I'm a king. You're a king. You already got the blessings. Stop bowing down to something you already got. You already got the money. You already got the favor. You already got the position. No more bowing to false gods. No matter what the consequences are, you are going to be delivered by God. There's nothing God can't help you escape. No situation God can't get you out of. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire. It looked like they were trapped. It looked like they were going to be dead. They were walking through the fire. Joseph, he was thrown into the pit. He kept God first. God rose him to power. Daniel, God rose Daniel and his friends to power yesterday. He gave them the interpretation. I talked about it. The interpretation of dreams. Another chapter in Daniel. Daniel was thrown into the lion den, but God saved him. He shut the lion's mouth. God always puts you in a position where it looks like you're going to be defeated to show everybody else who the true and living God is. The only reason you're in that position, you're in that circumstance, is not because you did something wrong. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because God doesn't love you. The reason you're in that position, you're in that condition, is because God loves you and he's about to show himself mighty through you. He had to make the circumstance look like you were about to be defeated so people would look at you and see you. And then they would see God deliver you and they would give God all of the glory. That's what happened to Joseph. That's what happened to Job. Everybody was looking at Job. But God got all the glory. That's what happened to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were looking at Daniel. They were looking at Daniel when he was in that lion's den. They was like, man, it's over for Daniel. Everybody was thinking about Daniel. And he was going to be dead the next day. But God did not let him die on purpose. So he would get all the glory. All the credit. All the honor. In that situation. He uses his children. And he puts them in situations that non-believers think are impossible to escape. And he makes them escape. He makes them escape to show them with God all things are possible. There's nothing too hard for God. He puts Paul and Silas in prison to show the non-believers. I'll get my children out. And I'll get them out quickly when you praise me and give me glory. See, the non-believers couldn't get out of prison without, they couldn't get out of prison on their own. They've been in there. But God used Paul and Silas. He put them in the midst of unbelievers to show the unbelievers who God was, who God was, who God is. So don't look at your circumstance and think that it's over for you. You're in that position to save much people. God has you positioned to save souls. So guys, I'm going to finish this. Daniel chapter 3, uh, verse 28. I'm going to finish all the way to 30. It says, Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants, who believed in, trusted in, and relied on him. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, and, or language that speaks of anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces. You see how when you put God first, you see what God did? He made the demand, he made the command even deeper. Because he Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down to this false God, you'll be thrown into the fire. But he saw that the fire can't the fire can't handle. God, so now he's saying, he changed the decree, now you got to serve the real God. And he says, if you don't serve this real God who just saved them through this fire, 
You don't believe in this God that just saved them through the fire. You going to be cut into pieces. And their houses will be made a heap of rubbish. For there is no other God who is able to save in this way. Then the king called Shirek, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. Guys, when you keep God first, we saw it yesterday, he will promote you. When you keep God first, no matter what circumstance you're in, he will protect you. When you keep God first, no matter where you are, no matter how it looks, he will provide for you. When you keep God first, no matter what it looks like, you can be, looks like you're not going to be successful. Remember, David was tending to the sheep. And they didn't think David was going to be the next king. He anointed David. God, when you keep God first, he will position you. He positioned David. Okay? So God will, God will promote you. He will protect you. He will provide for you. And he will position you. When you keep him first. And he will plummet the enemies. He will punish that's another P. He will punish all of your enemies when you keep him first. Another P. He'll give you peace when you put God first. All right. So let, let me repeat those right here. Okay. God will protect you. God, God will promote you. God will protect you. God will provide for you. Okay. God will position you. God will punish your enemies when you put them first. He will punish your enemies. And he will give you peace. So guys, I love you. Be blessed. Share this video. Somebody needs to see it. Um, have a blessed day, guys. God first, okay? No matter what. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Love you guys. Be blessed.